you so much. And Ashri, as I told you, all the credit goes to you. You kept me pushing and pushing and pushing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sri, and uh, all thanks to Sri Learning. Thanks a lot, Sri. It's all uh, your guidance and coaching helped me. Thank you very much, Sri Ram. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sri Ram. Couldn't have done it without you or Sri Learning. Yeah. Hey, hello everyone. This is Sri from Sri Learning. If you want to talk about PMP success story, I have Aishi Jain with me who cleared PMP June first. Am I right, Aishi? June yes, 1st. yes. You, you mark the June date 1st. in the calendar. You mark in the calendar June first. I'll rock. Is it true? Yeah. Yes, I did that. Uh, but you know, the once you marked it, the pressure starts adding. Is this also true? You have to be. <laughs> yes, but my intention was to be under some pressure so that I can give it finally. <laughs> I rescheduled it for a couple of times. <laughs> but then I thought that okay, this time I'm not going to reschedule it. This time, whatever happens, I'll take it. <laughs> Do or die, I'll jump there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was like, I can't handle this pressure anymore. God. And anyways, I thought that, okay, even if I would have given it two months earlier, I would have done it the same way. So I thought, <laughs> okay, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. First, congratulations, Aishi. Um, that's a great achievement from her. And uh, this is a beautiful certificate. She got it. Huh? I I'm sure you're yeah. excited the day you got it, isn't it? You feel, ah, thankfully, it's all done now. Yeah, I mean, I was very impatient. I was checking my mails like every other hour <laughs> whenever possible because I gave it on a Saturday and I thought that, you know, it it might take a couple of business days. Oh, so yeah. It came on Monday. Okay. So for two days, I continuously kept on checking my email and portal. Oh, two days is a long waiting time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it was all worth it. Worth it, huh? worth it. Nice to know. So to mention, Aishi, you are uh, with the Sri Learning, you did a scale agile training, uh, then you did a PMI ACP training, then you came for the yeah. PMP. Now there is a continuous learning journey is happening. Is it something you are lifestyle like this? You keep learning something always? Yeah, I mean, I like to read about new things and I like to improve depending upon whatever is going on in my office. So that's how I think. Nice. You no know, one should keep on learning something or the other. That's that's good. That's good. You know, in uh, if you go with the scaled agile, the questions will not be uh, these many numbers, right? It will be forty five questions you would have done when you come for PMI ACP around uh, one twenty questions. One twenty. Yeah. yeah. When you come to PMP, it's one hundred eighty questions. I think it. You also incrementally <laughs> developed your uh, <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. now I think so. <laughs> I think so, right? So uh, you right. think. Uh, you think the PMP is a need in the market? Is it something which you thought which can help you? Yeah, I think it is always good to learn about the new terminologies, technologies that are going on in the market. And I think it will keep you at par with what is the market trend. Yeah. Because the PMI exams are also evolving as per current market standards. So it, so it definitely helps you true, to true. understand like. True. You rightly said it's evolving. They do keep adding and adjusting the papers according to the market trend. Right. And right. in fact, you did a PMI ACP. I think ACP is a more tougher exam. They go detailed on agile. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think there were multiple factors why I feel so because firstly I did it from my home. So there were a there were a few glitches in that exam. Secondly, it was a very, very deep exam. I thought that, you know, it's going too deep into Agile. So, and yes, definitely it was my first exam of PMI. So maybe that's why also I felt it was a little tougher. And you came to PMP exam. I think you choose center-based exam. This time yes, I was it. very clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, when I was giving ACP, I completed it in two hours. It was a three-hour long exam. Mm -hmm. I completed it in two hours, but then still, I didn't want that kind of pressure. So I scheduled this one. At the center, I said no, you know, no risk. I don't want to take any risk. Also, you understood the PMI model or a flavor, how the exam will look like. That also would have helped you there. Yeah, that, that's a point. Now, one question for the viewers watching here: What kind of material you read? Because you are good in agile already, and uh, when you want to start reading for PMP, what kind of materials help you? I read. Uh, I mean. I was already PMI ACP. So uh, I think I was pretty good with the agile part and I am working in an agile environment since long. So that was, I think, my advantage. Uh, 
other than that i read rita 10 and agile practice guide so i did my training last year so at that time we were following rita 10 only so yeah. i read that and i read agile practice guide i think those two were sufficient yeah, yeah. and apart from that uh, i read the glossary part mm -hmm. uh, the glossaries that you suggested mm -hmm. so i think that is more than enough for your reading point of view mm -hmm. from the reading perspective and i don't believe in reading too much that is one thing mm -hmm. I, I don't and I, I mean i don't concentrate on too many materials i think you should go over the same material over and over just yeah. to see where you are and how much do you remember yeah yeah that's right i know you're a good book reading person right so for you right for you reading this kind of book is something like a uh, sit in the snacks time you read it no right? no 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 <laughs> i can't read these these kind of books <laughs> I can read only novels and all. <laughs> Shri, I'm done with the Pimbak Saman Man. When you did uh, Coffee Time, I did it. Huh? Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> no, no, no. Nothing like that. Because this is... PMI material is very dry, if you yeah. ask me. It's so, good. you'll you won't... Uh, and I think it's definitely better to read smaller portions at a time. Don't try to cover the entire chapter all at once. Mm -hmm. Read smaller parts, come back to it, revise, and then... Uh, that's a suggestion who listen to this uh if if they say stakeholder management or risk management don't try to sit and gulp all the content at a shot take a topic in right. risk and maybe how the risk register is getting prepared read that portion only or read how a risk response has been planned i think a piece by piece if you read chances are you may go better right that could right be right okay that's a good suggestion good suggestion now, uh, even though we read it, um, Aishi, when it comes to question solving, many people are still struggling. Um, they say that scores are not going well. Uh, I keep trying exams. First time I get 60%. Next time I get 61 or 60. I'm not getting 70%. I could not see a leap of jump just like that. I'm in the same place. Uh, have you faced it or do you have some thoughts how, how these people can improve the scores? Yeah, I mean, I was one person. I uh, did not give any exam without reading any topic. So what I used to do, I used to read a couple of topics, mm -hmm. give an exam, and then whatever. And then when I used to do a really thorough analysis of whatever questions I'm doing, whether those are 10 questions, whether those are 60 questions. So when I'm, I, once I give the mock, I'll analyze it and I'll try to figure out what topics are my weak points. So, for example, if I understand that, okay, risk management is something that I really need to work on. So, I used to note those down and maybe if there is any new terminology that I encounter in my mock, I will note that down as well. Mm -hmm. One uh, And once I'm done with the analysis, I'll go back to that topic, read it mm -hmm. and read a few other topics as well and then come back again to another mock. Mm -hmm. So, I think that, that way, gradually your scores will increase. And having said that, your scores will not increase always. That is also true. I mean, <laughs> once I scored an 87% and and in, 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 in I, I think I scored 70 or 75%. So it will always be random. So you don't have to worry, but then you have to set a benchmark that, okay, okay. these okay. many questions, yeah, at I least think. I have to go correctly. I think that's a good point, right? You don't expect always keep going high. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it won't be an increasing graph. It will be... Uh, distorted always. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You know what? Somebody watching this video on YouTube now, they may drag and listen to your score again. Did you say 87%? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... I mean, once I got <laughs> in one of the 60 question marks and I was so surprised that <laughs> I I continuously kept on scare, staring at the screen. I was like, is it true? <laughs> and then I came back to reality when I scored, I think, 70 or 72% in the next mock. So I was like, okay, you're not there yet. <laughs> but still, that's high. You know? There are people struggling. Yeah, that's pretty high. Percent. It's a good high score. Uh, I believe your agile knowledge or your book reading, I, I believe sometimes the question reading ability is also important, isn't it? Yes, that is very, very important. And uh, uh, what I felt uh, during a lot of my mocks was that I read the question wrong. For example, I missed uh, some keyword like accept, uh, you know, what are the good choices except so you have to choose one and I, I didn't realize that I choose the best option. So you have to re be really, I mean, you have to concentrate a lot on the question yeah. and then go with the answers. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, I know when you are answering 180 questions, sometimes after 100th question, you get tired. 
and uh, your brain won't be that conscious to read all these uh, terms right uh, that is also reason people missing out uh, that's also reason there is a two breaks in the exam yeah to utilize it have you used breaks in your main exam right yeah i used both my breaks and even when i was practicing the mocks the full mocks mm -hmm. i used to uh, i used to do them like 60 questions and then take a 10 minute full break mm -hmm. and you know like how we would do at the center we would go go out we would drink something eat something then come back so i used to take it like 60 questions at a time really? that kind of mindset will really help you because once you are on the six on the 40th question your brain will be like okay only 20 questions more same mm -hmm. with the second set same with the third set so don't think those are 180 questions yeah and uh, also one thing that you know uh, when whenever you whenever you will be giving your exam so it will be like 4 hours exam mm -hmm. so you have to practice that habit of sitting mm -hmm. if you don't have the habit of sitting then it will be very problematic Understood. Yeah. so anyhow you have to practice that True, true, true. Sitting four hours is the toughest job, right? People get tired with that. Yeah, right. Now, uh, talking about this, now you went to center place exam. I believe you did in uh, Delhi. Yes, I did it in Noida. Noida, you did it. So the facilities yeah. would have been that um, they have to verify all your ID cards and they allow in. Um, how is the time management? Because at uh, 2.30 minutes, was it sufficient for you when you write the main exam? Yeah, it was pretty sufficient for me. Even I had 20 minutes left when I submitted for oh. my exam. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> and and honestly, it was uh, very strange because I completed my mocks in like three, three and a half hours. So oh. it was way more than what oh. I was doing in the mocks. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking to someone who is that range of people who can hit the exam with the left hand. Huh? <laughs> no, actually, when you're giving your mocks, you are little free. But yeah. when you're giving the main exam you have to be very very careful sure, so yeah. Yeah. i deliberately took more time in my main exam like okay. uh, for the first section i took 80 minutes mm. that was very very deliberate because i knew that you know this mm. this section will set my pace yeah. then it was almost 65 65 minutes so time management was good i took my breaks Mm. both the breaks i went out drank water and whatever i had mm. and even uh, i think for the second break i i must have taken at least 12 minutes mm. because my invigilator was looking at me like <laughs> why she why isn't she coming back <laughs> <laughs> so you know she was telling me come fast come fast so but i was very composed i thought that okay hardly two minutes i have a lot of time left wow wow so, oh wow that, that, that was, that's a good one right i've seen people uh scared of time management because the 230 minutes is not sufficient for them because they lose a lot of time in the first slot itself see first 60 questions some people take 110 minutes so if you take 100 plus minutes in the first slot you start adding the pressure That's no all. i think you have to do that time management like you mm. i was pretty sure that i will not cross the 90 minutes mark mm. for the first section no matter how i have to manage so so i was like okay let's do 45 questions in uh, i mean 30 questions in these many minutes okay so that way you ha you'll have to break your time into uh, 20 20 20 something like that that strategy you have to develop it yourself yeah yeah that's, that's a good so, point also in the center yeah. they're giving a plastic sheet or paper to write down one of the advice here is you have to mark down because in the clock it will be 2 30 minutes start detecting down 229 228 so you should put a number here when it comes to 150 minutes in the clock by this time i should have been done with my 60 questions so it's an indication when i see 150 or 160 or 140 somewhere there keep indication i have to stop it because when you are in the exam hall i don't think your brain thinks so much on the time part you 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 involve in a question you keep reading the question again and again yeah that's right. also, that's also there yeah so, we can do that yeah, you that's, can a good, that definitely. that's a good point super Aishi, that's a great effort from you now if you want to give some thoughts to the people who listen to this video um the, there are some people say that you know what i started my class a month before one year back but a lot of break happened i feel i lost my rhythm um how to get back so if you have any points to how to get back let know i did my training last year one and a half years back so I can be a perfect example of how to come back. So, uh, I mean, I did my training last year in January, January, February, March. I think we completed it. 
so after that i started listening to the recordings again and again but i was never very consistent so but what i used to do like sometimes i used to pick up my rita book and read a chapter hmm. so this way i completed my entire rita and it took me a lot of time but I, i mean i'm not suggesting that but then it is a good way to keep up with your preparation if you can't be very very consistent for like two months hmm. so i prepared it very very slow i used to read sometimes sometimes not and uh, whenever i used to start uh, thinking that okay this month i will restart my preparation i always used to start with your recording so i must have mm. seen and heard those recordings each single recording at least thrice oh so, <laughs> yeah that was you. very very helpful yeah <laughs> i mean whenever i'm traveling whenever i'm going whenever i'm sitting idle maybe sometimes you won't have uh, uh, you know you won't have the mindset of sitting and reading yeah. a book so then yeah. you can definitely read uh, listen to your recordings then what i did is uh, when i was like pretty sure in february that now i have to anyhow mm. give the exam mm. so by that time i had read the rita book once okay so and agile practice guide i had read it during my acp times okay. but yeah, but yes i thought it in february that let's restart it and in a very very proper manner Fantastic. So I think I got uh, in touch with you, and I asked that okay, I have read Rita ten, and now we are doing with Rita eleven. So you told me that you no, know, it's fine. You can go right, ahead with yeah. Rita ten. That's that's right. That's yeah. right. So right. so what I started doing, uh, I thought that you know I'll I'll you know prepare in very uh, in a very structured way. So mm-hmm. I thought that let's read few couple of chapters. and then i used to give a 60 questions mock so every week i think in february i might have given at least 4 5 60 questions mock so this way i started preparing same i did in march and in april uh, my you know my concentration reduced a little bit mm. but but yes i was in touch with the subject so that was one good thing and in may i started giving my full mock so uh, what i would suggest is that don't lose your focus completely keep on reading something or the other if you if you don't have time at all mm-hmm. you can go through few of the questions you can you know it's always good to be in touch with the subject a little bit even if you can't sit and read for a very very long time that's perfectly fine but have that thought always lingering in your mind that you have to give the pmp and once you will schedule your date then it will become easier because yeah, you will have a yeah. lot of pressure yeah yeah the rhythm is set i like that idea listening helps you a lot and reading yes also taking some questions will trigger your thought couple of questions yes. go correct couple of questions can go wrong that can also trigger you hey what i have to read that in the book yeah you do that nice and uh, whenever i was giving any questions so if any topic pops up hmm. it will hardly take me half an hour to read that topic i mean if it's a small topic for example uh, conflict management was one thing that was appearing again and again in the questions and those questions were going wrong Mm-hmm. so instead of reading the entire thing again entire chapter again you can go and read that portion so that at least you will have that feeling that i'm reading something mm-hmm. so it will help you in mm-hmm. keeping in touch with the it's subject go piece by piece that also helps you nice to know super yeah but it would be better if you can you know spare some 2 3 months mm-hmm. in a single go and not stretch it for too long yeah yeah but again if a corporate jobs are pulling you personal life has some commitment yeah many people that's a problem right they lose the track and right. they come back uh, i especially ask this question because it can help people to listen that hey how can i come back yeah that's a point fantastic fantastic okay. super aishi super aishi was well, thanks a lot for coming up here um the purpose of these success stories to give some tips uh, which can help people to pick up can follow that and we know that somebody cannot copy exactly what aishi did uh, it could be some here and then pick up but but i think it's challenging right somebody can take 87% somebody is doing in a 3 and a half hours exam and that's something different and she is a different person from the day when we learn pmi acp she'll be always the top range but again we pick up some learnings from you that's very really important yeah great okay. great great so credit goes to your family also who supported you mom dad they says hey you yes. do, doing yes yeah they they were very supportive they knew that i am doing something <laughs> and i am reading something and Uh, in may when i told them that okay my exam is in june they were very very supportive mm-hmm. i always used to keep on reading or doing some mock some questions uh-huh. they were very supportive in that okay timely you get a coffee and food on the table uh, to keep focused yeah yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> <laughs>
All right, great. Once again, thanks a lot, Aishi, for coming up here. And uh, we take these valuable points for the people who are preparing for the examination. And good wishes for your career growth because applying what you learn is very important. Yep, good wishes. Yeah, for you. Thank, thank you so, thank you so much. And especially, I wouldn't have done it without you and your team. <laughs> I job, mean, good. even after one and a half years, if you guys are supporting the person who took your training, that's commendable. Well, Not that's many nice. people would do that. <laughs> That's nice, guys. Even one and a half years later, you're coming to us. <laughs> you, you still believe us, huh? That's a, <laughs> we see that in a positive way. <laughs> yeah. Good, cool. Okay, good wishes and keep rocking. Thank you.